So let's take a start at business models and customer development. But you know, before we even begin, one of the first questions I tend to ask is, what is a company? What is it that I'm trying to actually start? Just for the sake of this class, I think we ought to use this definition. A company is a business organization which sells a product or service in exchange for revenue and profit. So explicitly for the purpose of this class, I'm eliminating nonprofits. Let me be clear, you could use the business model canvas and customer development to go through the process for nonprofits, but actually having some goals that are fairly concrete, revenue and profit, allows us to measure whether we're succeeding and failing in very clear ways. And that leads us to the question, what's a startup? You told us what a company is, but how does a startup differ? And for me, you have to know, I spent 20 years doing eight startups, and I never could have given you a definition off the top of my head what a startup is. I always thought a startup is where we had free food, or there was a great small team, or you could bring your dog and whatever, but I never quite understood the purpose of a startup. So I'm going to give you Steve's definition of what it is you're actually doing. One is a startup is a temporary organization designed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model. Now let's go back and parse this sentence uh, because this is pretty important. Number one is temporary. The goal of a startup is not to be a startup. A startup actually aims to become a company. Well that's kind of interesting because if you really think about it, at least if you're a web mobile startup, there's no such thing as a 10-year-old startup. There's a 2-year-old startup attached to an 8-year-old failure. A startup is a temporary organization. And what are you supposed to be doing? Well, while you think it might be building the product, or maybe if you're thinking harder, it might be get customers. Actually, no. A startup is actually designed to search for something. Well, that's kind of interesting. What is it that I'm supposed to be searching for? Let's see. Well, number one, you want to search for something that's repeatable. And repeatable means the same thing that works on Monday works on Wednesday and works on Friday and works next week and works the next month. That is, I want to find sales and marketing and engineering processes that are repeatable. And I also want to find them scalable. What scalable means, I put a dollar in, I get two dollars out. Or I put a dollar in, maybe I get ten dollars out. But I better not be losing money on a continual basis or I'm called a out of business startup. Okay, I, I know I'm searching now for something repeatable and scalable, but what is it that I'm searching for? And what you're searching for is the business model. And that business model search is the basis of the rest of the class. So let's take a look and see how we become a company. So one of the interesting things about thinking about a startup is how is your company going to be organized? And what we now know is the most efficient way to think about all the pieces, just all the parts, is by a business model. And so the next question is, okay, Steve, you just told me to think about a business model, but what is a business model? What are all the pieces? Well, let's take a look. And a business model is how a company creates value for itself while delivering products or services for its customers. Now, if you think about it, in the old days, we'd think about how to organize a company around functional organizations. We'd think, no, 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 a company is about its sales department or its engineering department, and you would draw an org chart. But now we're going to draw a very different diagram. We're going to draw a diagram of how to think about all the pieces of a business. And so let's take a look at these nine boxes. Nine boxes to describe any company from the world's largest to a two-person startup starting in your parents' garage. If you're doing more than just watching these lectures, one of the things you're going to be staring at a lot is the business model canvas. If you're watching this video, the first thing I suggest is stop, go to businessmodelgeneration.com, and download the canvas and print out a bunch of copies. Then go get a bunch of yellow stickies and a red pen because that's what you're going to be using for the next couple of weeks. Now what we actually do with the business model canvas is in week one, you use those yellow stickies to put up all your hypotheses. Uh, you probably don't have many facts yet, but you can make some pretty good guesses about what's your value prop, who the customers are, what your channel is, and what your pricing is. But what we're going to be doing is really interesting, is as you come back in with facts, we're going to be marking up the canvas 
and crossing out the things that actually weren't true and replacing them with the things we've learned. And we're going to do that week after week until what we end up with is a stack of business model canvases. And what you'll find out is at the end of the class you can actually play back these canvases almost like a film strip and see what you've learned over time. Let's take a look at the first piece called the value proposition. The value proposition answers the question, what are you building and for who? The value proposition says, hey, it's not about your idea or product, it's about solving a problem or a need for a customer. That is, what pain are you solving, what gain are you creating, and more importantly, who are your customers? Now, value proposition is a fancy word for what product or service are you building. This is where you normally would list all your features and here's all the speeds and feeds and benefits and whatever, but you're really going to be asking a different question than might have been used to. It's not all about your technology. Your technology is just part of the value proposition. Customers really don't care about your technology. The customers are trying to solve a problem or fulfill a need. By the way, we'll be talking about this uh, through multiple lectures. Uh, the difference between a problem and a need is a problem is I have an accounting problem or I want to use a word processor. And, and those types of products uh, solve uh, problems. But there are other things that human beings do, like I want to be entertained or I want to have a date. Those are some basic hardwired social needs. Or I want to communicate with my friends, like Facebook or Twitter. Those are needs. Needs are different than problems. And by the way, if you could find products that solve needs, your total available market, as you'll see later, is huge compared to I solve specific problems. So the next thing is, who are my customers? Who are they and why would they buy? And as you'll hear a number of times, your customers do not exist to buy, you exist for them. And what you're going to do by getting out of the building is figuring out all their geographic, social characteristics, demographics, such that you actually could draw and put up a picture of, on your wall of who the archetype is or who the persona is of your customer. And it turns out that in most startups, you might have more than one or two or three types of customer archetypes and personas, but you need to understand them in detail. And there is no possible way you could have anything but a hypothesis on day one of who they are. The next is channels. How does your product over here get to your customers over here? And we use distribution channels to do that. Now what's really interesting is pre-1990s, the only channels to get to a customer was a physical channel. That is, you went to a store, you had salespeople, there was physical distribution. But since the mid-1990s, in the last couple of decades, we now have virtual channels, the web, mobile, cloud. And so distribution channels, the first question you want to ask is, how will I be selling and how will I be distributing my products? Are they through physical channels or are they web mobile? Or given today, almost every physical channel also has a web presence. What is the relationship of how your product gets from your company to the customers? Customer relationships is kind of the fourth piece. And customer relationships has a really interesting interaction with these other three pieces. It basically says, how do I get customers, how do I keep them, and how do I grow them? And just like thinking about distribution channels, these are very different for web mobile than they are for physical channels. But visually, they kind of look like this double-sided funnel. So let's just take a look at quickly a web example. In getting customers, you're going to be worrying about how do I acquire them? That is, how do I get them even to my website? How do I activate them? That is, how do I make them do something? And then later on, we'll see after I got them, how do I keep them around? That is, how do I not lose them through attrition and churn? And then what can I do once I have customers to make them spend more money or use my product even more? And so one of the things we'll be thinking about is how do I get, keep, and grow customers? And just like every other step, you might have hypotheses on day one, but you're only going to figure this out when you're out of the building. The next thing is revenue streams. How do you actually make money from your product and service being sold to customer segments? You know, revenue streams basically ask the question, what value is the customer paying for? And it actually has you think about 
what's the strategy of how I'm going to capture that value? Is it I'm going to just have a direct sale and it's a, a transaction based on price? Is it a freemium model where I'm going to give away the product for free and hope that some portion convert later? Is it a license or subscription model? That revenue model is different than the pricing tactics. That is, what is the dollar or pound amount or euro amount that I'm going to be charging? Again, the only way to figure this out is being able to interact with tens or hundreds or thousands of customers till you finally understand what the right revenue stream and revenue model is. The next piece you want to think about is what are the key resources? What do you need to make the business model work? What assets are important? And what's an example of an asset in a, in a key resource? Well, finance. Do you need capital? Do you need a line of credit? Some assets are, and resources are physical. Do you need physical plant, like a manufacturing line? Do you need specialized machines? Do you need vans and for delivery? Do you need cars? Is there something else you need? Is there intellectual property you need? Is there patents you need to acquire or protect? Do you need to acquire customer lists? Or is it just that you need to get great people, great software programmers in a specific area, or great hardware designers, or great manufacturing people? And then finally, again, uh, the interaction between intellectual and human capital is that's another key resource. What specifically do you need to do to keep these people and who are they? The next piece is who are your key partners and suppliers? And partnerships are kind of interesting is we need to ask ourselves before what's the deal is what exactly are we acquiring from partners? And also what activities are they going to perform and when? And this is where startups sometimes make a mistake of thinking, well, large companies do partnerships. I guess I need those too on day one. It turns out the types of partnerships you need in year one are certainly not the ones you're going to need in year three or five or ten. And the types of partnerships could be strategic alliances, joint ventures, just regular suppliers and buyers. And so you need to be thinking through who, are, who they are and actually getting out of the building and testing them. Next are key activities. What's the most important things you need to do for the business to make the business model work? Are you in the production business? You know, are you making something? Or are you in the problem solving business like you're doing consulting or engineering? Or are you managing supply chains? What, what are the key activities you need to become expert at? And then finally, all this adds up on the left hand side over here to costs. What are the costs and expenses to operate the business model? One of the interesting things about cost is it's not just the obvious ones like people or buildings or materials. What you're really going to be asking are what are the entire costs to operate our business model? And so you want to think about our, what are the most important costs you need to worry about? What are the most expensive resources you're going to need to pay for? And what key activities are the most expensive? And then you want to ask the typical accounting things. What are fixed costs? What are variable costs? Are there economies of scale? And you want to start getting a good handle on what it is that will end up costing you money to run your business.